for the first time since 1977, the union extortionists who run America's ports like a private kingdom have shut them down. The International Longshoremen's Union boss, one Harold Daggett, was quite open about the goal, gleefully promising the nation, quote, I'll cripple you, I will cripple you before laying out with apparent glee what that means. No cars, no steel, no clothes, shuttered malls, laid off construction workers. So much for solidarity of the working men. And suddenly, if you watch the video, Daggett seems to be doing his best mobster imitation. The I will cripple you is straight, Tony Soprano. This is ironic considering Daggett's been charged for conspiring to extort companies with prosecutors alleging ties with the New York Mafia including that they installed him as union president where he makes $900,000 per year and owned a 76-foot yacht. So the strike would effectively block every port from Maine to Texas since longshoremen run the cranes that load and unload boats. This would stop about half the goods coming in and out of the United States. Note that includes Louisiana, as in the Mississippi, which is how American farmers export billions of dollars of farm produce that will now rot in the fields. A various estimates put the economic damage at roughly $5 billion per day. There are already a reported 100,000 containers sitting on the dock in the New York area, with many more across dozens of ports. So why are the longshoremen striking? They're demanding a 77% raise to their 100,000 plus salaries. Actually, some make 400 to 500,000 a year, which is about 10 times what a non-union crane operator makes. Now, 77% raise on 400k is pretty decent money, the kind of money you can only make when you are able to cripple people. The salary actually wasn't the sticking point, though. The ILA is also demanding an effective veto on any port automation so they can keep crippling the country for decades to come. The ports had offered 50%, which is way too much, let's be fair, but they balked at the automation. Why? because America's union-dominated ports are already among the least automated and least efficient on Earth. So a 2021 World Bank study estimated top U.S. ports are among the worst 5% on Earth for efficiency behind Mombasa, Kenya. Not only does this drive up costs, it's the main reason America's roads are clogged with trucks. So it's so expensive to get a union guy to touch a container, it's actually cheaper to drive hundreds of miles to put it on a smaller boat to take it into Cincinnati. So a sex brought to you by Unchained.com, the most obvious solution, which is firing half a million dollar longshoremen and hiring new guys to run the cranes, is off the table for two reasons. Because crony unions bribe the Democrat Party to make it illegal, and because union violence against replacement workers is effectively legal, ranging from razor blades and the seat cushions all the way up to shooting. That brings the other option, the Taft-Hartley Act. So in theory, this allows Joe Biden to order longshoremen back to work for 80 days. In reality, the 1.3 million member Teamsters Union just sent out a letter warning Biden to, and I quote, stay the F out. So Biden-Harris will not lift a finger, especially with an election 33 days away. Given the ELA truly does have the country over a barrel, most likely this gets very generously resolved in time for the election with the millions of victims from construction workers to farmers to you left to pay the bill. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.